Bowflex Max Trainer and Made Assembly video. In this video, we'll show you how to install the Max Trainer M8 Fitness Machine. Before you begin assembly, please make sure to read the assembly manual thoroughly as it contains important safety warnings and assembly tips. Please note that there are some steps in the assembly process that might require two people to help with the assembly. Some components of the machine can be heavy or unwieldy. Please use a second person when doing assembly involving these parts. Begin by selecting an area where you are going to set up and operate your elliptical machine. For safe operation, the machine must be located on a hard, level surface. Please allow a minimum workout area of 78.5 inches and 97 inches as shown. Be sure that the workout space you choose has adequate height clearance, taking into consideration the height of the user and the maximum incline of the fitness machine. Start the assembly by checking the parts list. There are two boxes included with your assembly. Box 1 contains the following parts. Box 2 contains the following parts. Check the assembly for the following hardware. Please note that a right R and left L decal have been applied to some parts to assist with assembly. Select pieces of hardware have been provided as spares on the hardware card. Be aware that after proper assembly, there may be remaining hardware. The following tools are required for assembly. The following wrenches are included with your assembly. A number 2, 5mm, 6mm, and 8mm Allen wrench, as well as a 13mm double box wrench. Step 1. Rail Assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. You might require two people to help with the assembly process in this step. It is highly recommended that someone assist you with this step. Begin step one by attaching the rail assembly, part number 14, to the back side of the frame, part number one. Slowly push the rail assembly towards the frame and match the top holes as shown. Next, using four part A screws, four part B washers, and four part C washers, secure the rail assembly to the frame. Securely tighten each screw using your hand. Only hand tighten the hardware at this time. You will need to fully tighten the hardware at a later step. Finally, using the provided 13mm double box wrench, release the frame from the shipping plate by removing the hardware located on each side of the frame. Make sure to remove the hardware on both sides of the frame. Step 1 is now complete. Step 2, attaching the levelers. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 2 by attaching four part 16 levelers onto the stabilizer assembly, part number 15. Rotate the levelers clockwise to fully tighten. Tighten all four levelers. The levelers might require adjustment to level the machine. Make sure to follow the instructions in the assembly manual when leveling the machine. Repeat these same steps for the opposite side. Step two is now complete. Step three, stabilizer assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. You might require two people to help with the assembly process in this step. It is highly recommended that someone assist you with this step. Begin step three by carefully lifting the frame assembly from the shipping plate. Place the shipping plate aside and place the frame on top of the stabilizer assembly, part number 15. Matching the frame holes to the top holes of the stabilizer assembly, secure the stabilizer by hand tightening four part D screws and four part E washers. After all hardware has been hand tightened, proceed to fully tightening the hardware using the provided 8mm Allen wrench. Repeat these 
same steps for the opposite side. Next, proceed by fully tightening all hardware from previous steps. You will require the provided 6mm Allen wrench to fully tighten the four part A screws that were previously used on step 1. Step 3 is now complete. Step 4, attaching the stabilizer shroud. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 4 by placing the left and right stabilizer shrouds at the bottom near the front of the frame assembly. Part number 11 is the left stabilizer shroud and part number 12 is the right stabilizer shroud. A right R and left L decal have been applied to the parts to assist with assembly. Snap both stabilizer shrouds into place as shown. Repeat these same steps for the opposite side. Step 4 is now complete. Step 5, attaching the rear shroud. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 5 by attaching the rear shroud, part number 2, onto the frame assembly. To attach the rear shroud, place the inside hook of the rear shroud on the frame assembly and then pivot it up into place. Use one part F screw to secure the shroud. Place the screw on the top hole as shown and tighten the screw using a Phillips screwdriver. Next, attach two part number 17 caps on each side of the frame assembly. Gently push each cap into position. Step 5 is now complete. Step 6, attaching the legs to the frame assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 6 by attaching both part 9 legs to each side of the frame assembly. Starting with the left side, place one part eye wave washer through the top post as shown before attaching the leg. Attach the leg to the top post and the bottom part of the leg onto the rail assembly. Proceed by securing the leg to the frame assembly using one part A screw, one part B, and one part G washer. Tighten the screw using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Finally, cover the hardware using one part H cap. Push the cap into position. Let the leg rest on top of the rail assembly. Be aware that the legs are connected and when either of the legs move, the other does as well. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. Step 6 is now complete. Step 7, attaching the pedals. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 7 by placing two foot pedals, part number 10, onto the frame assembly. Starting with the left side, insert the two ends of the pedal onto the leg assembly. Be careful to avoid fingers or hands being caught or pinched. Secure the pedal by using two part J screws with two part L washers on one side and two part L washers and two part K lock nuts on the other side. Fully tighten the lock nuts using the provided 13mm double box wrench tool. Tighten the screw using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side and make sure all hardware is securely tightened. Step 7 is now complete. Step 8 attaching the foot pads and the foot pad inserts. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step eight by placing two part five foot pads onto the pedals. Starting with the left side, attach the foot pad using four part M screws. Insert the screws through the foot pad and through the pedal. 
fully tighten all screws using the provided 5mm Allen wrench. Repeat these same steps for the opposite side. Next, place the foot pad insert, part number 4, onto the foot pad. Slightly push the foot pad insert into place. Finally, attach part number 3, the front foot pad insert, into the foot pad insert, part number 4, as shown. Gently clip the front foot pad insert into place. Repeat these steps with the opposite side. Step 8 is now complete. Step 9. Attaching the console assembly and the media capture bar. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 9 by cutting the shipping zip tie that secures the cables inside the top frame assembly. Use scissors to cut the zip tie. Do not let the cables drop into the frame assembly and take care not to cut or crimp the console cables. Next, place the console assembly part number 7 on top of the frame assembly and connect the console assembly cables with the frame assembly cables. Slowly insert the console assembly into the frame assembly without crimping the cables. Secure the console assembly using four part end screws, four part O and part P washers. Fully tighten the hardware using the provided 5mm Allen wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. After all hardware is secure, proceed by attaching the media capture part number 20 onto the console assembly. Simply push the media capture bar into place as shown. Step 9 is now complete. Step 10, attaching the upper handlebars. For this step, you will require the following parts. You might require two people to help with the assembly process in this step. It is highly recommended that someone assist you with this step. Begin step 10 by placing the left dynamic handlebar, part number 8, and the right dynamic handlebar, part number 13 on each side of the frame assembly. A right R and left L decal has been applied to the parts to assist with assembly. Be aware that the pedals and upper handlebars are connected and when either of these parts move, the other does as well. Starting with the left side, secure the dynamic handlebar using three part Q screws and three part R lock washers. Fully tighten all screws using the provided 5mm Allen wrench. Next, repeat these steps on the opposite side and attach the right dynamic handlebar, part number 13, onto the frame assembly. Step 10 is now complete. Step 11, connecting the AC power adapter. Begin step 11 by placing the AC adapter, part number 18, to the front near the bottom of the frame assembly. Next, plug the power adapter as shown. Push the AC adapter into location and make sure that the power adapter wire stays clear of all moving parts. Congratulations! You have now completed the assembly of the Max Trainer M8 fitness machine. Before using the machine, please make a final inspection. You can now remove any protective covers from the face of the console as well as the plastic scratch guard strips from the rails. Please inspect the machine to ensure that all fasteners are tight and components are properly assembled. Do not use until the machine has been fully assembled and inspected for correct performance in accordance with the owner's manual. Enjoy your new Max Trainer M8 Fitness Machine. Brought to you by Bofu.